Hello friends, today we are going to talk on anterior odontoid screw fixation. So these odontoid fractures are very common fractures, especially in elderly patients. Of It has three types of fractures, of which type 2 is the commonest one. The mode, mode of injury uh, is high energy trauma in a young patient like road traffic accident and fall from height. While in uh, elderly patients, it happens uh, even after trivial trauma. The ligament uh, around the odontoid is uh, important to be known uh, because if this ligament are injured, so odontoid screw fixation is contraindicated as it it causes instability of the C one C two joint. Anderson has classified odontoid into three types. Type 1 is occurring at the uh, tip, type 2 is uh, at the waist, and type 3 is uh, at the body level. Uh, there may be some involvement of C1, C2 joint uh, in type 3. Uh, uh, Growers has further uh, uh, subdivided uh, type 2 into type A, B, C. So A is uh, undisplaced transverse. B is uh, displaced uh, transverse or uh, uh, oblique fracture from anterior superior to anterior, uh, posterior inferior. And uh, C is communicated uh, oblique fracture from anterior inferior to posterior superior. Of this type, A, A and B uh, uh, are, uh, is preferred uh, for odontoid screw, while type C is a relative contraindication for the screw uh, if we uh, since um, when we try to compress the uh, fracture with a lax screw the posterior superior uh, border of the uh, proximal fragment might uh, uh, injure the cord in compression mode the vascularity of odontoid comes from two places the tip is supplied from the branches of internal carotid artery while the uh, body uh, is supplied by the branches of the vertebral artery. And there is a watershed area, which is usually at the waist level, at the type 2 fracture. Hence, uh, the uh, non union rate of this fracture is slightly high, and uh, screw fixation is, is uh, recommended in these kind of fractures. Uh, so, this is a young patient, a uh, 24 years old male with a road traffic accident and associated injury. His neurology was intact. In open mouth view, you can see C1, C2 joint was uh, congruent. And um, uh, the odonate is anteriorly displaced. There was no spinal cord uh, injury. And uh, the ligaments uh, in actual cut uh, looks uh, intact, especially the transverse uh, ligament. There was some combination at the fracture site. So this should be the ideal trajectory for odontoid screw fixation. To get this trajectory, we might we may have to remove some part of uh, uh, anterior superior uh, 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 anterior superior uh, uh, corner of the C three and uh, some part of the annular center disc. So the uh, after we, placement of guideway, we had to drill the trajectory and uh, place a lag screw. Mm -hmm. This should be the arrangement in the OT with two C arms, uh, one from the head end and one from the side. The head end C arm uh, is in uh, lordosis, uh, so it, through open mouth view we can visualize the C1, C2 joint and odontoid better, and uh, a, a lateral uh, uh, C arm uh, to show the. Uh, uh, C1, C2 joint uh, in lateral view. Uh, so this is uh, what we recommend. However, with a single C arm, uh, this is uh, still doable, but uh, it's recommended to use a two C arm. Surgeon is starting at the standing at the axilla uh, on the right side for a right-handed surgeon. The next should be hyperextended, uh, and chest uh, uh, should not be interfered. Uh, with the trajectory. Uh, the, the prerequisite uh, for this fixation is that uh, the odontoid should be anatomically reduced. Uh, and one may rely on traction 
or a transoral pressure uh, for reduction. For traction, we can use a garden or tongs or maple. Skin marking uh, is done by placing the guide wire uh, over the skin uh, and taking a CM shoot uh, uh, and uh, marking at the level of uh, a sternocleidomastoid anterior border crossing uh, uh, where the guide wire crosses uh, the skin uh, at the anterior border of sternocleidomastoid. Okay. And this guide wire should be uh, placed uh, at ideal trajectory of the screw. It is usually at C5 uh, body level. So this is a patient, uh, same patient. We have done an anterior approach uh, from right side. I am standing at the, in the exit of the patient. You can see the CM shoot. My assistant is standing on the opposite side. We have used a Langen bag uh, for retraction. Uh, one can use uh, Hoffman's uh, retractor. Uh, but I prefer to use a Langen bag here. So... Uh, you can see, uh, I'm, I have marked uh, the entry with the help of a cautery. So I can see uh, the entry with my uh, direct vision. I'm shaving off uh, the anterior superior uh, 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 corner of the C3. Then, uh, I'm doing an angulotomy and removing some part of this. So I get uh, the ideal entry, which is at the anterior superior, uh, uh, anterior, anterior inferior, uh, uh, just below the anterior inferior uh, corner of the C2 body. So, after uh, getting an ideal entry, I am uh, putting a guide wire. One should uh, imagine the, uh, the trajectory of the guide wire uh, uh, before uh, passing the guide wire. Uh, sometimes, uh, if one may not uh, give an ideal trajectory because the guide wire is slightly flimsy, one can use a drill bit uh, also. The tip of the guide wire is, uh, uh, should be centered uh, in AP and in lateral it should be directed just posterior to the uh, tip of the odontoid. This should stop at the uh, distal cortex. Here one should attempt uh, to take a bicortical hold. The screw is measured and a lag screw of 38 millimeter uh, is inserted. And further tightening is done uh, to compress the fracture site. And to get a bicortical hold, uh, So we further tighten. The screw position looks uh, acceptable to us. On post-op uh, x-rays, the uh, odontoid looks uh, anatomically uh, reduced and uh, screw position looks uh, quite acceptable. Thank you very much.